In today's video, I want to go ahead and start working on our main camera and I want it to start following our ship around. Now, of course, we could just go and drag it onto the player ship, make it a child of it. And when we go ahead and start our game, that will follow it around as we move. You know, that's okay. That's one way to do it. But I want that swaying ability where it kind of goes left, right, up and down. So what I'm going to do for that, oh, did my game just crash the view? Nope. Okay. What I'm going to do with, for that is go ahead and create a new script. And I'm just going to call it follow cam. But for now, I'm going to go ahead, drag it out of the player ship. I don't want it to be a child. I want it to be all by itself. I'm actually going to go ahead and rename it to follow cam. Just so I know when I'm looking at it in the hierarchy, this is not the main camera that Unity gives you by default when you create your scene. I will need a script. And we'll call that follow cam as well. I'm going to go ahead, drag that onto the game object follow cam. And let's open it up. All right, there's a couple things we need to know right off the bat. Since we're going to be moving ourselves according to the, the player, and by ourselves, I mean the camera, we need to know the position of the player. So for that, I'm going to keep it private, but I'm going to make it a serialized field because I can assign it in the inspector. And what I'm interested in following is not necessarily the game object, but it's transform position. That's the point. That's the, the point of reference that I really want. It's just its position in 3D space. So instead of grabbing the, the game object, I'm actually going to grab its transform and I'm just going to call it target. And the next thing I need to be worried about is moving ourselves through space. And since I'm going to be doing this in update quite a bit, I'm going to go ahead and cache our transform and I'm just going to call that my T. I do not need a serialized field. I'm not going to be playing around with that in the inspector. Now there's two more variables I want to look at right away. And one is what is the default position of the camera that I want behind our player? As it follows the player, where exactly do I want it to be? I know I want it to be behind him. So it's going to be negative on the Z. I don't want it to start off or like the default position to be anywhere besides center on the X. Now, if you want that kind of camera feel where you're over the shoulder, maybe you're making an FPS and you want it to be over like the left shoulder or the right shoulder, then you can go ahead and add an offset to that as well. But for this game, I want it to fall directly behind on the X. And I want it to be up a bit, kind of looking down. So let's go ahead and make a vector three for that. Now, I know I'm going to be playing around with this in the inspector quite a bit, but there's no reason to make it public. So I'm just going to use a serialized field. This will be a vector three. And I'm just going to call it distance. Well, let's do uh, root dis default distance, target distance. Yeah, let's do target. No, because I might get confused with the actual target transform. So I'm going to say default distance. And I want to give it a new value just to start off with. So I'm going to make it a new vector three. And as I said, I did not want anything on the X. I do want a little bit on the Y. I'm not sure exactly how much. Like I, like I said, I just want some default values in here. And I'm also going to do negative 10 on the Z. So it's behind me and slightly above. Great, a one to fifth, a one to five ratio. Now the next variable we're going to look at right now is how far behind us should it, that elastic band be? Since we're going to be using lerp or linear interpolation to get that nice smoothie elastic feel, I'm going to need some sort of dampening for it. So again, no need to make it public. So I'll just make it a serialized field. We'll keep it private. This is a float value, and I'm just going to call it distance dampening. Let's just call it system damp. Cut a few, cut a few characters off. And just to give it a default value, I'll go ahead and say 10. And let's leave it there for now. We are going to need another one a little bit later on. But let's just work with that rubber banding back and forth to the ship. So in awake, I want to go ahead. It gets me every time. I cache my transform. So I'm going to say my T is equal to transform. Then I'm going to jump straight into the update. Now, actually, because this is the camera, I don't want to use the update. I actually want to use the late update. And the difference is the fact that uh, late update happens after update. And the way I like to organize stuff into it is that update is when I move my player. Late update is when I move my camera. So if you want something to happen before something else and you're doing it in update, you might want to consider moving one of them to late update. In this case, I have my player move and my player will always move before that frame the camera camera's movement is called. There's also a fixed update, but that's where we do all our physics stuff. All right, so now we know where we are. We know where our target is. We want to know what the distance is to our target. Now, every frame, we're going to have to calculate the position that we want to move to in our LERP. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new vector three. I'm just going to call it two position. And I'll go ahead and take my current position. Oh, I'm sorry, our target's position. And I'm going to go ahead and take the its rotation 
multiplied by the default distance up here. Remember, both of these are vector threes, and then add it to our position. That's gonna give us the, the spot we wanna actually move to in space. Now that we have the spot that we wanna move to, and we know where we currently are just by going ahead and using the position of my T, we can go ahead and call the lerp command. And here's how we do it. We're gonna go ahead and create a new vector three, and then we're gonna call it vector three dot lerp. Remember, that's the linear interpolation. And all we wanna do is just go from one point to another point and at a certain speed. And because we are doing this in one of the updates, we wanna make sure that we are normalizing it over the current frame rate. So we go ahead and use time dot delta time. And then all we have to do is just reassign it. So my T dot position is equal to current position. So let's go ahead, jump back into Unity and let's see how this works. So we'll go ahead, we'll start it up. And we have not assigned the player to the camera. So we'll go ahead, we'll grab the follow cam one more time. Later on, I am gonna have it automatically find it for us because our player is gonna be blown up and respawning. But for now, I just wanna re just uh, go ahead and hard assign it. All right, so now when I go, you notice how it has that little rubber band effect where when I accelerate, the camera kind of falls back. And then when I decelerate, it catches up. Now we're having a horrible trouble with it on any other sort of rotation. That's because we haven't actually told it to monitor the rotation yet. We just have that back and forth motion so far. So let's have another quick demo. As I accelerate, it falls behind. As I let go, it catches back up. All right, there's a bit more work we got to do with it, but let's go ahead and do that now. What am I missing on my camera here? Apparently some model behavior. Must have been something I was playing around with. All right, let's jump back into the code. And the next thing I wanna do is take care of the rotation. I want the camera to do pretty much the exact same thing that we're doing with the distance. You know, that little bit of lagging and rubber banding behind, but not just in one direction, as far as, you know, forward and backwards. I wanted to do it all the way around my ship, regardless of the angle my ship is at. And so for that, we're gonna use slurp. So I'm gonna need some sort of value up here for that. And I'll keep it at 10 for now, but instead of calling it distance damp, I'm gonna call it rotation, rotational damp. I'm just gonna leave it at 10 for a default value. Again, these numbers you're gonna to wanna to play around with to find the exact ones that work for you and the model of, or the size of the, the models you have in your game. So since slurp works the exact same way as lerp does, or at least as far as the way you code it, we can go ahead and almost copy everything about the first one and just change some of the values. So again, we need that rotation that we're gonna to try to target ourselves to this frame. So we're gonna use the quaternion dot look rotation. We're gonna go ahead, grab our target's position, minus our current position, and then call target dot out, just so we know which way is up on our target, which, which is the top of the ship as opposed to the bottom, just so our camera doesn't get flipped upside down. Then for the slurp command, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we save that off as a quaternion, because that's what we're gonna be working with. And we call the slurp command, and of course, it's just some random value A to some random value B. In this case, it's gonna be our rotation to the rotation we wanna to be to this frame. Then of course, we want that spread out over some amount of time. And the amount of time we're gonna do it is, well, time dot delta time, which is the time from last frame to this frame. And then we're gonna add that modifier that we have up here just to speed things up so they're going at the speed we want. Then after we're done that, we're gonna go ahead and just assign that back into our rotation. So I'm gonna go ahead, save that off, jump back into Unity, and let's try it out now. Uh, make sure the camera is selected, because I'm probably gonna wanna adjust all of these values. But again, once you have the code in place, it really is just season to taste. So now when I turn left and right, you see how it doesn't follow our ship exactly. And up and down, I think I want a bit more bend in that. So I'm just gonna leave it running. And let's do a lower number, two. And now we get to see a little bit more. That looks pretty good. So I think two is actually the magic number I'm gonna go for. I don't think I wanna go any lower. This is a float, so we can go into decimals. One is just too much because it flies too far over and you're actually eventually, if you just kept hard turning, you can't really see what's in front of your ship. Maybe 2.5. Now there's still a bit more we gotta do with it, but right now we have a script that will follow our camera around relatively smoothly. We still have to 
get rid of a bit of stuttering, but that's not going to be too bad. And I guess we'll do that in the next video. So go ahead, find out your magic values, play around with Lerp and Slurp, as we use those quite a bit in game development. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.